Hey everybody, welcome to Average Guy Opinions. I'm your average guy, John Corelli, and uh, with the with the third of February, I'm turning over a new leaf. Um, I realized a lot of my videos in January were um, mostly about me and my recovery from a relationship, and so I'm getting past that. And part of getting past that is not fucking talking about it on half my videos. Um, my last video I might even take down. I got to review it. It's up, but I'm trying to do a little more quality. Um, as you guys know, I am a very busy person. <laughs> uh, so today I'm going to do the week in review at work because it was an, an interesting week at work. Um, let me start with Monday. Uh, I have I have a kid. He's Now, for those of you who don't know, um, I work at a school. I work in the special needs sector of, of a very small school. And there's, I, I guess it doesn't hurt to tell you what it's called. It's Sebesky Academy. It's here in Wheat Ridge. And we work with... Uh, high risk kids uh, to title one school title one meaning generally these kids are below the poverty line not all of our kids are but our kids have severe emotional needs um and we're trying to meet them and i'm in in the sector of that school so our kids both have those needs and also are on the autism spectrum so and some of our kids aren't a lot of our kids have violence issues but a lot of the kids i work with don't um, I reported a few weeks ago how I got bit by a kid after he threatened to f fuck, kill, and rape a coworker of mine. And uh, I'm the type of guy, I don't care if I get fired, I, I don't just sit idly by and let that kind of language aggressively be spat out at a female coworker. It's just not going to happen. And so when I told him to cool it, he attacked me, he tried throwing a punch. I, think I, I know I talked all about this. And then he bit me. So this Monday, I have another student, and I'm working with him hard, but he's a very difficult kid. He's a, what we call an SWC, uh, the strong-willed child. <laughs> he's 12. Um, he's pretty intelligent, but he also is lacking a lot of basic math skills, a lot of basic uh, reading skills, writing skills, three R's. <laughs> and I always laugh when uh, reading, writing, arithmetic. It's like, well, no wonder we have problems in this, edu in this, uh, in this educational system when two, only one of the three R's actually starts with R, reading, writing, arithmetic. But, you know, <laughs> be that as it may, this kid has problems with all three of those things. He, he, but he's smart. He can handle things. He has very intricately, he has very intricate knowledge of like um, mechanical systems. He actually, this was kind of a cool thing. And this is what I, where I'm trying to send this kid and lead him with his education is um, he really cares about like the, the emergency lighting systems in our school, the, the fire and, you know, th that's fire too, but the sirens, all those systems, he's really into that stuff. He cares about the heating and cooling systems and the water systems, he, all the things that make a building go, uh, he cares about. And it's pretty cool. And by the way, I don't know, the today it lo looks foggy. I don't know if there's a problem with my lens, but if you guys want to make a comment on how it looks foggy, I feel like I'm in a dream sequence of a soap opera. It's very weird. So <laughs> if that's something that's actually a thing, or maybe it's just my old eyes and it's early in the morning, I don't know. But once again, be that as it may. Um, so I've, I've uh, tried to specialize his education, what, what few moments in the day we, where he can actually get educated, where he isn't running off and wanting to do his own thing. And if he doesn't get to do his own things, we'll lash out violently towards his educators. Um, I, I actually got, I, I got some, um, some, geez, John, words, they're important, uh, literature, uh, instruction man manuals and guides from these types of things. Because one day we went out with the guy uh, our maintenance guy for the district, and he has to come. He probably goes to a school every week and checks everything, all the all those systems, because they have to be up to code, you know, fire code, uh, security codes, whatever. Um, and he so he went through the, our halls, and my my guy, uh, my student, and I followed him and helped him. And the guy actually said, "This guy's actually better at being an apprentice than one apprentice I had." And he probably wasn't lying. I mean, this kid, and I can't say his name, but he knew the batteries that go to these things. He knew, hey, I need the frog eyes. He would get the frog eyed light and, and hand it to the guy, and the guy would install it. It was great. And they bonded, and uh, we all three bonded. It was a really nice experience. And so I'm trying to leapfrog, or not leapfrog, springboard off of that into educating this kid. But it's not always easy. And he doesn't want to do what he's supposed to do. And when, as an educator, I tell these kids... Depends what level of, I've educated people from 5 to 23, right? I've been in the special needs world for nine years. I mean, I've really been in it for 26, if you include my kid and all the education 
um, and work I've done with him and how, how much Dante has educated me. But yeah, so depending on the level, I always tell these kids, what's this building made for? And 99% of the time, oh, we're here to learn. They go there. Let's, let's go with that then. And uh, at the middle school, high school level, I call these people young, young men, young women, young adults. And hey, here's the level we're working towards. Here are our goals. Here's what we're here for. And I talk to them like adult and an adult and a parent. And in fact, when I got interviewed for this job back in May, I said, I teach the way I parent. Tough love. I, I hate that term. And I don't, didn't use it in the interview. But I go, I, I love these kids, but I'm hard on them. That's how I said it. And I go, but I do demand these kids uh, get educated. One of my coworkers just uh, the other day said, well, it's more behavioral. And I just focus on the behavioral. I go, that's true. This is primarily a behavioral school. However, we do have a curriculum. We do have standardized testing here, CMAS, the Colorado version of that. So, yes, we do focus on the behavioral, but we also need to focus on the educational because, you know, it'd be, it's nice if they can behave like they're supposed to once they get into the real world. But if they have no education with it, how well can they function? In the real world. So it is both. And I'm a big education guy. Sometimes that's at odds with my coworkers who think they know everything. But that's another story for another time. So this week in review very quickly. So I want to show you. <laughs> there's a bruise I sustained. And on the other side, uh, the bite. Not much. It's just a bruise now. Pretty much there are a couple little... Same spot the other kid got me a few weeks ago, by the way. So we made a joke that this is my prime cut. My left tricep is apparently very tasty, very Italian. I don't know if there's oregano in there. Maybe we sprinkle some sugar on it. But in the, la the only two, I've been bitten before, but it's been a very long time when I was at the elementary level. But the two times I've been bitten in school, same spot. And then this came from him grabbing me. So when this kid doesn't get what he wants, he will grab people and try to drag them to where he wants to go. And if you resist him, he might start swinging or hitting you with his shoe uh, or, or hitting you with an implement. Um, and so this is, what, this is kind of what happened on Monday. That was my Monday. And then uh, Tuesday, he actually did a lot better. He had a really good day. Wednesday was a day without incident, in my opinion. You know, every day we're dealing with conflict and dealing with kids and just trying to get them to understand how to better navigate just being a person. You know, just uh, working on manners, working on... Uh, appropriate touching, working on language, all of that. And, but so Wednesday went off with pretty much out without incident. And then I went to a union meeting and that was interesting. I'd, I'd only been to one other union meeting, but this was a meeting. I think there were school board members there, but there were definitely representatives of the district. And then there were representatives of my union, which is called JESPA, J-E-S-P-A. Don't ask me what it stands for, but it, it, it's a union for para, para educators, people that are uh, non-licensed um, and uh, but very integral in any school district. Para educators are very important. We often know the kids best because their lead teachers are divided. You know, are, are busy writing EP, IEPs and dealing with uh, you know, with um, you know uh, what am I with CMAS uh, testing and other standards and just setting up the room and having having a curriculum. Right, there's a lot to do when you're a lead teacher, and they get paid more and they earn more. But we also have some issues that we're dealing with in the union. And so at the union meeting, uh, they were supposed to have an audit, I think back in December, maybe very beginning of January. I think it's due on January 1st. Uh, you know, it's a government funded organization, obviously. It's a school district and they have to make public their, their numbers and where the money's going. And so apparently on the last, uh, the last, I think it was January 14th, I tried to meet every three weeks, maybe it was the seventh, but, uh, the school, this, the, I'm just going to call them Jeffco because, like I said, it's a mix of school board me members, um, admin people, uh, high level admin people, and on the other side was union representatives. Um, so they're they're like, well, um, we we don't have those numbers, and we're like, our side's like, why? And they're like, well, they're not compiled yet. Well, you told us last time they would be here for this meeting. Well, maybe we can get them to the next meeting. And I was like. And nobody said anything. That was the bothersome part. I felt like, you know, what do you mean maybe next time? You're supposed to have them here now. And that was what I got out of the meeting was, it was about a, I would say 30, 40 minute meeting. Um, a person I work with, her name's Tiffany. She's great. She represented our school and she's part of the, the actual inner circle of the union. And uh, the one thing I did see, and it felt like Congress, a lot of legalese. We had put forth a proposal of things we wanted, just things we wanted. It wasn't a contract. It's just, here's what we want. And then they, of course, take it to their legal eagles and change up the language a little bit. And it'll probably go back and forth. 
And it really shed light on, onto why nothing <laughs> seems to get done because of all the legalese. It's like, can we make it the simplest language that, that, that is possible? One, I remember one specifically was a, the word assist because it was, um, should a paraeducator lose their job? Uh, the, the, uh, the school district has a role in that to assist them getting a job, getting on track to get another job within the district. If it's, you know, obviously if it's like a, a non-firing situation, non-terminating situation. And, uh, they actually had a problem with the word assist. I get it. I get that because, well, what does that mean? Do, do we have to help with resumes, help with actually getting a job, all this stuff. But man, that's the kind of legalese and frankly bullshit that, that grinds things to a halt at every level in, uh, of society when we can't just come together and go, no, here are the meat and potatoes. Don't worry about the oregano <laughs> to, to go back to, huh, clever, ooh, that's a callback. But honestly, don't worry about the spices. Don't worry about the salt and pepper we throw on. Worry about the meat and potatoes, the water, the milk, whatever we're having, the asparagus. Worry about the big shit. Let's get it done. I'm going to go to the next meeting on February 21st and probably give you another report, but that was my week in review at my school. Like I said, I'm trying to, I, I would love to do self-help videos, but I'm not, not really the guy for that. You guys know how to use the internet. I've found a lot of self-help lately, and my self-help now is getting past the situation I was in for the last five months, uh, trying to uh, have good memories of that person, and just moving on with my life, and uh, hopefully a friendship with her, but right now she doesn't want that. That's fine. That's fine. I've got other friends. I'm going dancing tonight. I'll probably give you a report on that. I'm going to try to shake my ass for a few hours. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> there you go. That's 12 minutes. Uh, that's probably enough of me. And uh, I'll talk to you guys next time. Have a great weekend. Uh, I, it's just getting started. It's Saturday morning. And uh, much love. Talk soon.